So to summarize the validation phase, now at what point you should feel like this is the, the summary of all, all of the things, like where does the validation phase end? And of course it never ends for your next products and next features and so forth, but for the sake of having enough of those things that you are you are you can start to look to grow because the growth then will open up and enable you more resources and more access to resources and will keep you from dying and running out of the fume of the first product or the first features so the growth is your protection as well so the startup is ready for growth after the core team's ability commitment to build and execute the vision is validated so the team is capable of doing these things and is capable of finding the validation, is capable of doing these things. If it's not capable, then you don't have a validated team. So this exercise helps you to validate the team so that it is ready to grow. And the product have clear customer and market validation. So now you have a product and, and of course at this point you have to have a working product for minimum of single feature or single use product that customers love and you have numbers to back it up to prove that now you have all the data all the metrics all the information you need to take to an investor and say here it is and at the same time you can go pitching endlessly for, for VC investors and never get investments if you can't prove enough credibility level that you have committed team, you have validated team and you have a, some kind of validation with your product, not just an idea but actual product and things to communicate with that. You can get grant money, you may get uh, even angel in investors that may, may get excited with the idea. And it's, of course, it's not about hunting investors alone. This is just for that context. The most important thing is hunt for revenue, paying customers. So here are some of the additional, more higher level KPIs that, um, that you can also track for your own benefit, for your team's benefit, and also for external communication if you want to communicate uh, what have you been doing um, and, and, and summarizing some of the outcomes of these exercises. So how many assumptions uh, you have to, to validate? What's the list of things? Like how much have you identified? Uh, what types of methods, how many? And what are the, let's say, top three methods you are using currently to validate in place? And what is, so what is the quality perception of that? You can get that from you know, mentors. They can say, oh, that's very smart. Or actually some of other teams were using something like this. Maybe you could consider that. Um, number of actions validating assumptions. So how many different things have you done already? How much are you doing per day, per week uh, to validate these assumptions? So that's communicating real actions, real progress and then quality results of validations. So what, how many outcomes, how many answers you have already got and what, how many learnings you have recorded based on those and how many new assumptions, improved higher quality assumptions to, this, to be validated have you got from your actions. These are real valuable things. These are the types of things that startups should have. And at the same time, if you don't have, then your pitch doesn't really help. You can pitch for the attention, you can pitch for certain level, but when you start the conversation, and if you get further along, when you start conversation with partners, with bigger customers, uh, or with investors, then they would ask these details. And if, if you don't have that, then you have also wasted time pitching. Um, if you were pitching for, for that result, if you were pitching for team members and you get team members, great. Other parts, volume of data to evaluate versus effort of getting it versus its usefulness. So basically this is uh, what type of data you have 
um, coming in. So this is basically the conversion rates and the types of numbers you are getting versus the effort of, of getting that. And, and the happy customers, very, very important. You have to define what counts as a happy customer and then you count how many you have. Paying customers, much more easier. Uh, you, you see the revenue and that's, that's, that's it. Um, so projects, so for example, in the case of if you are doing your product uh, through projects as one of the ways to fund your progress. So for example, a typical exercise would be that you would like to build a, a uh, uh, let's say a, a know your customer solution for a bank that you would like to make a product that you sell to all the banks in an efficient or new finance players in an efficient manner. Um, so you could find a customer, a bank or a actor, and say that we will make you a custom version that is only done for you or fit to your needs. So it's better a KYC solution than anything out there. But you then agree that we can, we'll make a more generic product out of this afterwards, and that's how you make a scalable product. Or it could be any type of this where you uh, develop your product through a project that actually is at the same time validation in many ways, and you have uh, real cost customers uh, to work with through the project at the same time when you're actually getting paid to build it for that customer and getting the first product to that. So if that would be the approach, then you could calculate how many projects have you sold to help develop that um, more generic and scalable product through those projects. And then of course, numbers and conversion rates, interests responded and so forth, quality of the pitch itself. So basically if there's, and often there is uh, pitching opportunities where where audience or judges do scoring live, you know, push of a button or afterwards or whatever that may be. Um, and volume of business model canvas iterations. So this includes the, also the value, propo propo value proposal, uh, like a proposition uh, canvas as well. So how many times it's been iterated and how many versions there has been. All of these are outcomes of the real actions that you are taking. If you can give these types of numbers compared to a company that or startup that don't have anything of this nature even available, they either don't know they should have it, it of this available or they have some like we have so many website visitors or, or whatever like just vanity metrics that actually don't communicate anything about the effort or anything about the pace of learning or anything of those nature that actually describe real innovation progress or progress towards the innovation being validated.